What is up everybody, it's your boy Brian with another episode here on the American Auto YouTube channel. Today, we are messing with that Dodge. My camera's a little dirty, I have to clean it here in a second. But what we're gonna do is in that big old box right there is a brand new turbo. So right off the bat, you can see we've gotta move this air box. Let me back this camera out a little bit. We gotta move this air box, we gotta disconnect that. Uh, air intake temperature line i've already got all that soaking in pb blaster down there and you see how rusty and crusty that line is that's one of the reasons we're going to replace it now i also went ahead and sprayed down the v-bands on this just to go ahead and get them soaking uh, to make it a little bit easier uh, there's another line on here on the front that needs to be changed but anyway guys there's that other v-band i need to spray that one back there at the very back on the bottom back there i still need to spray that so yeah let's get started now the reason we're doing this is because over time he's felt the truck losing power losing power losing power losing power and i took it for a test drive this morning and noticed right off the bat when you get past half throttle three quarter throttle it goes into limp mode until you let off the throttle now, I have a sneaking suspicion that that might have something to do with the throttle position sensor. But we will find that out once we change this turbo out because I know for a fact that turbo is leaking. And, yeah, it's bad. So, why not go ahead and replace it, right? So, it's something needed to be done anyway. Uh, guys, this truck actually belongs to the wife of my friend at Top Notch Trees 23. Go check out that YouTube channel. Now, they don't have a YouTube channel for this particular part of their businesses. Uh, they actually have multiple businesses, uh, BDNF Farms. So, if you're in the Tri-Cities area and uh, you're out at any of the events that you see and see the big food trucks out there, they've got the prettiest food truck you're going to see. All food trucks are usually black or white or silver or some kind of fun. They actually painted this one a really cool greenish-blue kind of cover color so you'll see it it's bdnf farms kitchen uh they grow it goes straight from the garden to the food truck I, i'm pretty sure that's how they got it worked out um but they do have good food so if you are in the tri-cities area and get an opportunity to go by and try their food please do that so show, show them some support Ladies and gentlemen, I just got started on this and already found the first bit of a problem. You got to change your air filters. Let me show you why. So this is the top of the air box. I pulled it off looking just like this. Do y'all see a problem with this? Let's pull. I mean, that's not supposed to be off of there. That's supposed to be glued on, but it don't much matter. Oh my God. Like, Legitimately, I've never seen something quite like this. It Maybe it's not a throttle position control sensor thing. Like, it is absolutely stuck in there. Look inside the hole there. That's how hard it pulled. Um, yeah. All right, guys, I wasn't going to do this, but now I am because I just have to see this and y'all have to see this like wow we're gonna pull this out but it guys there's a metal grate on here that it plumb sucked into the box see it sucked it all the way in in that's that's bad i've never seen one do that bet the truck runs better now good god Oh well. So there we are. We've got the heat shields off and got the turbo loose, but it will not wiggle out of there. So what we've got to do is take all them bolts out of the manifold so I can lift that manifold up. Once I lift that manifold up, then I can pull that turbo right out of there, which actually in turn will give me more room anyway. And then we'll set the new turbo in, put the manifold back, goo 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 chew, rock and roll. I just got to wiggle this big old turbo out of here. Make sure I don't 
Let's see if I can wiggle this big jerk really quick. There we are. Right here. We're going to clean that up a little bit. Clean all that up. And got to pull that uh, hard pipe out right there and put the new one in its place. And then do everything we just did the other way and put turbo back in here. So let's get after it, guys. Hey, somebody tell me in the comments. This turbo that come off of this truck is a hull set. Yeah. It looks like a factory turbo. I don't know. Is it? 24 valve Cummins. Somebody let me know in the comments. All right, boys and girls, fellers and fellettes, as Vice Grip says. So we got our old line off. That took some work. And you have to be real careful on this end because they don't send a replacement of this one, okay? And, uh, matter of fact, we'll get a wire brush and clean that up. Um, but they don't send a replacement of this one. So to get that nut loose and leave this one, or not leave it, but get it broke loose so that way you have a little bit of movement in it, so that way you can spin it out. Otherwise, this elbow here hits the compressor housing. So you don't want to do that. So anyway, we got to that point. And now we're just gonna simply take this brush and clean up around that top edge. I don't, on, on something like this, I do not recommend using a wire wheel because you don't know how deep in there that rust is, okay? And I mean, I don't even know if, I don't have the wrench up here. Probably need to take that all the way off and just clean the whole thing, but I really am kind of scared to because I don't have a replacement. And we don't have time to order replacements because she needs her truck back. So we're just gonna get this cleaned up as good as we possibly can. And now we'll go ahead and pop this O-ring off of here. And this is what, the comes with a new o-ring guys if they send something in the parts kit use it okay especially for something like this because it don't hurt nothing to put a new o-ring on and if you're real careful about it and don't break the old one then guess what if the new one don't fit you have the one to go back yeah new o-ring in And we're not going to tighten that all the way. Um, actually, this needs to go around this way, like that. That's which way that goes. Okay. So, guys, I'm going to get this set back in the truck, and I'll bring y'all back in just a minute. All right, everybody, I'm back. Shirt change, because I had to leave and go pick up the baby and all that fun stuff. Anyway, I got back, and as you can see, it's dark out. That truck won't fit inside here, so I'm working by candlelight. Right. You know, I introduced a tool here a little while back, so quick as I got it, to you guys, and I was telling you about it. It's thread restore, thread restoration kit. Anyway, my purpose for telling you that is because I'm having to use it on this V-band. So let me get this joker in here. Let's see. I don't know if you can see them threads. Well, anyway, let's back this off of here. Now this is the actual restoration nut. So we'll pop that off of there, like so. Eh, still a little catchy there. But I'll show y'all just how good this works. Okay, I'm gonna stop it right there. But if you look real close at them inside threads right about there, you can see how they're gacked up. We're going to restore those right now. Now, I like to use PB Blaster on it. 
It don't take much, just a little bit. And then you just screw this on here like so. Now this one happens to be a 13 mil uh, nut. You just screw it on by hand until it stops, okay? And that's where you know your stuff's bad. Now, from here, we will simply, just like a regular nut, all right? And actually, let's use the ratchet side because <laughs> it's a little bit faster. Anyway, I'm gonna do this. Here, I'll turn this camera down a little bit, let you watch what you can. But all we're doing, guys, just running this on. And ordinarily, I'd say go a couple turns, which is what I had to do at the start of this one. Go a couple turns and stop, go a couple turns and stop. Now, we obviously don't need to go no further than that. But check out right behind those three. Let's see if I can get this camera a different angle to show you better. Ah, there we are. Right there. All right. So now we're going to pull this off. Just like so. Biggest thing to remember is not to put this on here as a regular nut. And then, I don't know if you can see inside there. Here, let's see if we can blow it up. All right. Can you see the grooves in it? That's what them grooves do. That's how it works. And then you end up with beautiful-ish <laughs> they're as good as they can get okay. and guess what good 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 you got our v-band back so Thanks here you go here's a better shot this is that kit okay and i mean as you can see it comes with national coarse thread national fine thread and your metrics and that's your nuts and I'm not sponsored by this company or anything, guys. There's no company name on here. This is a $60 kit off Amazon, okay? But if you're restoring cars or if you're working on old vehicles that you need certain size nuts and bolts for or whatever and you want to keep something original, this is a way to do that. Uh, you can either keep it original or there's another little trick that we always used. Uh for what we call antiquing bolts. And that's take uh, the bluing agent that you use to blue guns, old, old revolvers and stuff, and the little acid dip, and you can buy that individually, but the little acid dip, you pour some in your cap, drop the head of the nut, uh, bolt in it, or drop the nut in it, and within like five seconds, it turns it antique. Like it turns it black and makes it look like it's 100 years old. That's a really cool trick, and it lasts. I don't know what it does, but it'll take a stainless bolt and turn it into an antique bolt in five seconds. So there's that option too. I don't have any here I would show you guys, but what I do have here is this cool toolkit. And I mean, you also have your thread files as well. You got two of those. And under the handle is more threads. Uh, let's see. Yeah, see under the handle, you have other threads too. So, and it's on both of them. So, really cool set, guys. I love it. I think you will too if you use it. So, uh, yeah, order a set off Amazon. But I am curious to know, does anybody else's work table look like mine when you're crawling under vehicles? What I mean by that is you got your Bluetooth speaker. In my case, I've got two of them course i had it all laid out nice and neat back this off here a little bit i had it all laid out nice and neat but i got my vice here uh, that's my version of a bench grinder it actually does work i use that just for sharpening my tungsten for my uh tig then i've got my metal saw there in that box there i've got cutting blades and all that and of course y'all know about the tig welder but then you come down and you're laying out your wrenches, V-band, ratchet. And then there's that tool. And then you just keep moving on by. Does anybody else's workbench tend to look like that? <laughs> I'm just curious. I hope so in today's time. I hope everybody that watches my channel that's in America 
and I'm not saying anything against anybody who don't live in America. Don't take it that way. That's not what I mean. I know in Europe you can't have stuff like that except for like alarm uh, devices. But yeah, tell me if your uh, workbench looks like that. Kind of curious to know. <laughs> All right, guys. Good morning, everybody. It's a new day. And as you can see, the Dodge has moved. We got the turbo in, but I made a mess. Tech tip for you is when you have good stuff like the super clean floor absorbent, that works great. But on really thick diesel oil, I sprayed it with super clean and put a whole bunch of keto litter on. Now that being said, as you can see, it's all back together. Look at that beautiful turbo down there. Yep. Everything's back together. So I'm going to check the oil on this joker real quick, see where we're at, and then go get some. So we're letting them warm up them glow plugs a little bit because it's chilly out here this morning. Waiting for powering. We got Earl Pressures. Got a brake light on for some reason. I'm not real sure. Have a tank of fuel. We have got to put this guy on. And we got to check the four wheel drive because the four wheel drive isn't operating properly either. There's issues. <laughs> and we got to check the lights because lights are doing something funky too. All right. So we got the right amount of oil in it. Got a new air filter in it. We had to go with the micro guard because they didn't have another filter for it. They didn't even have a Wix. But anyway, so now we're on to the next part. Next part is, I'll show you, We, I kind of already got started, but I'll show you. So when he got this truck, it actually had a bed on it, a regular bed. And he got this flatbed from somewhere and put on here. And that's all well and good. The problem is that he didn't have nowhere to put his fuel neck, so he found a rust hole and just poked it through there. Yeah. So that being said, that's why it's here. So we are installing in one. Ain't great on the welds at all, but guess what? It ain't going nowhere. All right, so what we've got down here is, oh, a fact I get now. All right, so I've got to get this out of here. I have a coupler or whatever that I can put inside here. All right, so we got the neck in and we can go ahead and put the cap on. Let's see, just like so. That's broke because it's supposed to go down there. That looks a lot better. We'll figure out a way to mount that somewhere in there. All I did was rivet that on there and it's in there good and firm. The whole thing moves. As you can tell, it ain't going nowhere. So now we need to hook the bottom up. So I'm gonna get that done and I'll bring you guys back as soon as that's done. All right, boys, we got her on there. There's the tab, even riveted the handle on so that way she ain't gotta hold it. That's in there good and tight. And we ran all the hoses and they all have downward fall, so we're in good shape there. So now on to the next part. We get to play with the lights. So, up, oh, let's get right, the keys. We got the keys. Let's fire this joker up. Waiting for powering. All right, and the big thing was, let's see, turn the headlights on. The upper lights work and the lower lights are working. All right, let's turn on a blinker. Ah, I think it's got a ground issue. See that going? So let's find out. All right, guys. So. Engine's perfect, oil level is perfect. There's the finished product on that, which I already showed you that. Lines underneath. I haven't put the running boards on yet. Wires are straightened out. We have all turning signals and all that stuff. And she's turnkey running, got the air bubbles out of the cooling system. She cranks up and runs like she's supposed to. Got good heat in it. 
and beautiful. Everybody's good. Everybody's operating happily. Now, that being said, what I've got left to do to that is I need to check the diffs uh, just to make sure they have the same front and rear diff. And uh, also I've got to check the transfer case because it's having a four wheel drive issue. But I'm going to do that because I've got to get this show on the road. Uh, I'm running out of time quickly to get this done. And for any of you who don't do YouTube and don't do these videos, don't realize how much extra time it takes when you don't have a film person. Some of y'all that know me know I do everything right by myself. That being said, unfortunately, because this is a customer car, I have to focus on it. So sorry guys, can't bring you along for this one. But what I will tell you is I've got in that box right there is the water pump for my red truck. We got to put that on. And also I'll tell you the story about that little Ram there and that little four wheeler there. Guys, you're going to love it. My daughter loved it yesterday. She took off across that yard, head back. I, I'll, we'll get a video of it here soon. But guys, that's going to do it for this one. On the 2005 Ram 2500. Uh, make sure you comment, like, and subscribe. I mean, I'm doing this all for you guys. So hit the button for me. Uh, I want to give a big thank you to Super Clean because without their products, that truck would have left a god-awful mess that I wouldn't have been able to clean up using anything else. Uh, I've used Purple Power before, but Purple Power wouldn't even touch that old, that, that black diesel. Uh, I, it, it just, that black diesel uh, oil, that Shell Rotella. But tell me what you think about that uh, turbo trying to suck up the air filter. You ever seen anything like that? Let me know in the comments below, guys. But like I said, that's going to do it for this one. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, and I will see you guys on the next one. And remember, if it doesn't challenge you, it don't change you. Thanks, guys.